Hey pals, I'm here today to talk about my favourite read of the year so far, and that is Ohio by Stephen Markley. I very rarely do standalone reviews anymore, but I feel like this book needs way more readers than it already has, and also I just want to talk about it loads, so I figured it probably needed the space of a standalone video. So, this book was published back in, I think, 2018, and I remember when it came out thinking, oh, that's one I want to pick up, and it just went on the list of, like, hundreds of books that I someday want to get to. And I have like lots of sort of recommendations videos planned um, and I have TBRs for each of them and this sort of featured on one of those recommendation videos TBRs and that's sort of what spurred me to pick this one up. And I found it as an audiobook on script so I listened to the first 150 pages and I fell in love, was absolutely adoring it and I was like, do you know what, I really want to read this physically because the writing style is super descriptive and beautiful and I feel like I'm sort of missing out by not being able to like tab sections and reread sections. So I ordered a physical copy, I paused listening to it, and when it arrived I went right back to the start, reread those first 150 pages whilst listening, and then sort of immersed and read the rest of it, so the whole way through like audiobook and read, and I absolutely adored it. What is the premise of this book? This book is set predominantly one summer evening in 2013 in a small rural town in Ohio. You're following four former classmates, all of whom are in their sort of late 20s now, who are converging on their hometown on this one night for different reasons. And they all sort of have secrets to keep. And the novel is split between their four perspectives. So you get four audiobook narrators, they all did an amazing job. And not only do you get the events of that evening pieced together by each of them, because for example, the book will open with one narrator, but he tells things from his perspective and he doesn't see the full events of the evening. And then like, for example, the final narrator might actually fill you in on like the first event that kicked the evening off and give you much more details. So as you go through, um, you sort of get this patchwork quilt effect of the evening and you as the reader start to piece more things together. Something I really love about books like this that have multiple narrators from first perspective is that you hear what the person thinks of themselves, the way they think they come across, the way they want to be portrayed and seen by others, and then you see how they're actually seen by others. So some moments get described to you by multiple characters, but each character interprets those moments and the people in them differently. Um, I really love that as a technique in books. I think it, I think it works the most well as a book. And when I was reading this, I was thinking, this would be brilliantly adapted, but would some of the essence of it be lost because you wouldn't get those inner monologues? I think this is like down for adaptation, but I couldn't find out much about it. So as well as watching them on this one evening, a lot of their perspectives are also them reminiscing. And they look back on their high school years, but also some of the years in between. This book, lots of people have described as, as some people think it tried and failed and some people think it tried and, and, it, and won, I'm one of them, um, to be the great American novel. This is one of those books for me that I read and think I've never read anything like it. It's one of the most ambitious novels I've ever read and it, it's a feat. Like the, the fact that he pulled it off is phenomenal. Like. This book took my breath away. This is one of those books I finished about 11 o'clock at night and I tried to go to sleep afterwards and I couldn't. My brain couldn't stop wearing just thinking about all these char characters. Like they feel completely real to me. Like I feel like these people are still like moving through the world doing their thing. And I could just reread this in a heartbeat. Like it was absolutely phenomenal. So for me, this is when people use the term great American novel, this is it. And the reason I think this is like, you know, the great American novel is because what Stephen Markley has decided to do in focusing on sort of small town, rural Ohio in 2013 and, and the years preceding that is he has looked at a group of people who would have seen lots of uh, difficult parts of US history and would have grown up surrounded by that. I would have grown up in a part of the US that feels really um, neglected and ignored and a place they feel trapped by and they all feel desperate to leave but know inevitably most people won't leave. Something discussed throughout 
is that a lot of their peers are already dead, even though they should only be in their late 20s. Um, a lot of them go off to fight in the wars and don't survive, and that's in fact how the book opens. One of the key characters in their friendship group um, is his funeral, and his casket is being sort of carried through the streets of the town with um, the flag over the coffin, and you get all the sort of different perspectives on what it means for him to be like brought back as this war hero. Um, some of them died via suicide, some of them died via overdoses and all different things. And in studying this group of people, you see um, what it would have been like to grow up through this really turbulent period in US history. And I think the commentary is absolutely excellent. Now, I think lots of people would hate this book, right? I think this book has got like 3.8 on Goodreads and loads of people have given it five stars and loads of people have given it like one or two and I completely get that. I think you probably need, if you want to get an idea of if you like this book, read the first couple of pages which are like that intro and you get a description of the town and you get a description of this sort of funeral procession. See how you feel. The writing style is super descriptive, okay? Like you can see everything. Um, the sentences are very long, it's clear the author's very intelligent, he knows it, he's not afraid to show you it. And then read a section of the first narrator. The first narrator is Bill Ashcraft. Arguably Bill Ashcraft is the most unlikable of the four protagonists and he's also the most difficult to read in that he's incredibly intelligent, he knows it, um, but he's also on this like drug-fueled binge. So his sections are quite manic um, and like super descriptive and he takes up like 150 pages or something like that of the first bit of the novel so if you don't like his sections you're not going to be able to get through it so yeah I'd say like read the first page and then like read a bit of Bill's section and see if it's for you and if it isn't that's fine like, this is one of those books where I absolutely adore it I think it's phenomenal I think it should have way more people talking about it. I cannot believe it wasn't like nominated and didn't win loads of awards in the US. But I also understand that some people would be like, it's so pretentious, there's way too many long words, like, oh my God, he thinks he's so smart. Because yeah, I sort of agree, but yeah, I loved it. And, and there are points in this book where like, some of the descriptions for me were like a tiny bit overwrought. So like one I'll always remember is you're told um, a lot what these people look like by the others. And Bill Ashcraft has had this sort of obsession with one of the um, girls he went to school with and he describes her the way she looks. Um, she has green eyes and freckles, right? Um, but he describes it as if somebody had thrown some emeralds um, on the sand of a beach and like that's her freckles and like her eyes. And I was like, oh, that's like, that's bad. Like, let's not go there. So every now and again, the metaphors go a bit too far, but yet, yeah, Everything else is so brilliant that this could not not be the best book I've read this year, even with a couple of flaws, because it's so ambitious. Um, and I really think it doesn't strive too far and like fail. I think it strives that far and achieves it. Um, so yeah, there's a couple of like other things I guess I need to say. A key element of this novel, which you're told on the back, um, it says, before the evening is through, these narratives converge masterfully to reveal a mystery so dark and shocking it will take your breath away. In the first narrative, you're told um, that there's like a rumour in the town of the murder that never was. And like, Bill Ashcraft is like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, some stupid rumour, like, nobody was killed, there is no victim, there is no crime, like, this is just a stupid, one of those rumours. And every now and again, it's, it's hinted at by the other characters in the narrative. And when you get to the the final narrative, um, much more is pulled together and you start to sort of be able to piece some things together. Now one thing I will say is, at the back of this edition there's a, um, like a book club guide and there's an interview with the author. Um, and the author says, um, I'm really pleased with myself because um, I haven't spoken to a single reader who realised like what that mystery was. Um, from pretty early on in the novel I was like, oh, it, it could probably be this. Um, and it was. So like, I don't think the mystery in and of itself is what makes this book. I actually felt like I didn't think the mystery was going to be such a big part of the final narrative. I loved it and it was phenomenal. 
but this book was so beautifully written for me and was dealing with so many themes so intelligently that it could have had no plot it could have had no final reveal and i would have still adored it but that final chunk was also amazing for like suddenly having more plot and this big reveal and even though i had an inkling of what happened i hadn't like picked up on all the clues and like pieced it all together so i think he did still do a really really good job um i think i need to sort of highlight a few themes that this book deals with i mean this book is like filled with trigger warnings okay um there's a lot of discussions of um of drug use um of drug overdoses obviously that touched on suicide um but a key element of the narrative particularly when they're reminiscing on their high school years is sexual assault um and also sort of coercive control so I think that has to be said because when the book first starts there isn't so much of that and I found that I sort of got to the the final chunk and was like fucking hell like shit got dark like um because it was hinted at a little bit at the start but by the time you're that many pages in you're like you know 300 or 350 pages in before shit gets really twisted um in a way I felt like I'd gone too far to go back um but there's some really difficult content in this book to do with um, sexual assault and coercive control. So 100% don't pick this book up if, if that's something you find triggering as a reader because it doesn't shy away from those discussions. I and mean, when it really deals with um, long-term trauma um, those type of events can have on a person. So yeah, I absolutely love this book. I genuinely feel like I barely scratched the surface of describing what this book is about because there's a lot. And again, I want to repeat that these people are really unkind to one another. Lots of awful things happen to them when they're teenagers and young adults. So go into this book knowing that. Um, I think this author is very much of a, of a perspective that we're like sort of fucking everything up um, and we're sort of ruining everything. And he definitely portrays that um, through the voices of these characters, but also through their actions and the things that happen to the people around them. So this is not an uplifting read by any means. Um, but it feels very true and it sort of feels full of like beauty and despair so yeah I absolutely loved it immediately had a look to see if any new books coming out and he does he has a book coming out in January that's a thousand pages long which I can completely see how he could write four thousand pages but um also like fucking hell I thought like this was you know a, a big attempt I can't imagine what that's going to be um and my understanding is it's focused on like eco tourists and again it's following um this group of characters who i think are like a lot more disconnected they're not friends or anything um and like their story um sort of pieces together this like eco tourist arc um and i love the parts of ohio that were focused on um you know what we're doing to the earth and there was hints of eco tourism in ohio so i'm just incredibly excited to see what he does with that theme in a thousand pages so yeah really highly recommend you pick Ohio up let me know if you've read it um i'd love to know your thoughts on it let me know if you're planning to read it now and also if you have any other books that you feel like sound similar to Ohio or if you've read Ohio and it made you think of other books please recommend them because i'd love to read more books like it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye